Hi there, I'm High Voice, bringing you a technique to read a corrupted stack using Windyborg. As we begin, a gentle reminder to subscribe and hit that bell icon to be notified of new videos. This really helps me know the kind of content to produce next. So let's get into it. This is by no means the only or best way to read the stack. But I use this technique often as it is simple to do and only requires a text editor to assist with debug. We start by opening a memory dump. The symbols have all been loaded. You must have Microsoft symbols configured as we need it to successfully read the stack. Proceed to view the stack with K. When WinDebug is unable to read the stack frames, you will get the following warning message. Warning, stack unwind information not available. Following frames may be wrong. The warning is there to inform that WinDebug was unable to find the return address of the function, so it was unable to walk the stack properly. There are various reasons for this scenario. It could be that the symbols for the function was not loaded by WinDebug. This is quite common, so double check the symbols using SimPart and SimNoisy. Click on my previous video about symbol loading to get some tips on how to manipulate symbol loading. The function return address has an invalid value on the stack. This is less common, but it can occur if there is a buffer overflow or some other kind of stack memory corruption. WinDebug doesn't understand the function calling convention. This could happen if there is a .NET method on the stack. Even when WinDebug fails to walk the entire stack, it has a heuristic which will try to match as many symbols as possible. We will use this functionality to probe the memory when attempting to rebuild the stack. The WinDebug heuristic looks at the registers of the CPU to determine the starting point of the stack walk. Type R to view the registers. The register values that are important are in the EIP, ESP and EBP registers. I am debugging a 32-bit memory dump, so the registers have the prefix E. If you are debugging a 64-bit memory dump, then the registers will be double the size at 64 bits with the prefix R. We begin by first writing out the entire stack to a text file. We need to do so because we are going to use another tool to help match addresses on the stack. Type TEB to view the trade execution block. Within this block, the stack memory addresses will be visible. The memory of the stack pointer is arranged in descending order. This means that the bottom of the stack has the largest memory address. It's a bit complicated to explain why this is so, so let's just go with it for now. When we run the command to dump the stack, it's going to dump really a lot of text onto the screen. It will be inconvenient to be dumped this way, so let's get WinDebug to store the text in a file. Run log open slash d with a part to get WinDebug to open a file on the disk. Once this is done, all the output on the screen of WinDebug will be piped into the file. Run DDS with the memory address of the stack limit followed by the stack base. DDS is a command to dump double words whilst attempting to match any symbol found. The memory dump I'm debugging today is a 32-bit dump. If this was a 64-bit dump, then replace DDS with DQS as the stack frame of a 64-bit process is 8 bytes long. The technique I'm using works for both 32-bit and 64-bit dumps. We then close the writing to the log file via log close when it's done. So now we have our stack written to disk. Let's view a short primer on function calling conventions. There are numerous function calling conventions. Here are some which you will encounter. Regardless of calling convention, we know that there must be a memory address on the stack that contains the function return address. That's the address we need to find in our stack. Let's go back to the stack and view the bottom. Observe the lower stack frame. It's a null address. This is because it's the first function frame of a 32-bit stack. It's a bit confusing, but even a 32-bit process has a 64-bit stack. I won't cover it in this video as it might take too long to explain the process. The process is known as dunking. We can instruct WinDebug to walk the stack by providing the starting address as follows. K equals address. The full syntax of this command is presented as follows. We will use this to probe if our assumptions are correct. We start by probing the highest possible frame we can. Proceed to use the K command with an address. Observe that if the stack walk succeeds, the return address at the bottom of the stack will be null. Because I'm using a 32-bit process, 
the function at the bottom of the stack is always going to be ntdll rtl user thread stop. This is used to verify the bottom of the stack. To read the part of the stack that has the stack frames misaligned, we switch to another tool, Notepad++. Notepad++ is a text editor that has the feature of highlighting text that is the same. Any text editor that does that will suffice. What we will do is highlight the memory address of the bottommost function. We can get the address from WinDebug. When we highlight the address in Notepad++, observe that another memory address will also be highlighted. All the memory addresses on the left have a difference of 4 bytes. This is the signature of a 32-bit stack. We will use this knowledge later when attempting to find written addresses. Notepad++ is highlighting the location on the stack of a return address. You can confirm this adheres to the calling convention. Just below the highlighted text is the symbol name of a function. That function is one stack frame above. We can use this pattern to walk the stack manually. Select a function address, then navigate upwards to find the highlighted text. This gives the next frame in the stack. WinDebug should be used periodically to verify if our manual stack walk is correct. If we keep moving upwards, eventually we will reach the part that WinDebug was unable to read. Proceed cautiously through this part as there is no symbol to refer to. We know that the stack memory address must be within the range of addresses in the thread execution block. As we go up, we reach a symbol. It would be a good assumption to say that this symbol is correct, as it is higher than the missing symbols. We then verify this within WinDebug. We have two snippets of the stack that we can trust. The snippet below, the missing frames, and the snippet above. We also have the memory addresses of the missing part of the stack. Let's look at the memory address. We can ask WinDebug to show us the closest symbol using LN. This output is certainly incorrect, but we can use it to gauge how far away from the nearest symbol. Also observe that the module name is provided. This is especially useful when trying to deduce which symbol failed to load. If the memory offset is large, then the function is quite distant from the nearest symbol. Unassembling the memory address is useful if you have nothing else to go on. I am going to stop around here, as assembly is quite a dry topic that requires its own video. Let me know if you would like me to continue debugging via the assembler listings. We can join the snippets together for a reasonable estimate of what the stack would have looked like. This technique can also be used with .NET stacks, but you will need to run IP2MD to decode functions instead of K. I will cover .NET debugging in a future video. So, this is the technique I use in a pinch to manually walk the stack. It doesn't require any additional tools other than a text editor that highlights text. Let me know in the comments if you know this technique or have used it before. As always, if you like what you see and would like to support the channel, give us a like, subscribe and comment below. Until next time, I am High Voice. Signing out.